Hey guys, welcome to Tech Best. This is the OnePlus 5. Now OnePlus have traditionally been known for making flagship killers. When the original OnePlus One was released back in 2014, it was half the cost of a Galaxy S5, but had similar specifications. So because it was a budget phone that had flagship performance, it was called a flagship killer. Fast forward to today in 2017, the OnePlus 5 is the most expensive OnePlus phone to date and it can no longer be considered a budget phone. But does that mean you shouldn't buy this phone? No, not at all. This phone is excellent and worth every penny. It is still cheaper than a Galaxy S8 while delivering a flagship level experience. Now I got this one here from Gearbest, fully unlocked and running Google services. There will be a link in the description below if you want to check it out. There will also be some links down there to my brand new channel called Digital Versus, where I put the OnePlus 5 up against the Galaxy S8 and Xiaomi Mi 6 in a performance shootout, so be sure to check those out. So just like the Mi 6, it is packing the powerful Snapdragon 835. You can get it with either 6 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage, or a massive 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. Now the screen is a 5.5 inch 1080p AMOLED, so it's not Quad HD, but this should help with battery life, and the screen is still plenty sharp with good brightness and super saturated colors. Now on paper, the 5.8 inch S8 has a bigger screen, but because of its aspect ratio, the OnePlus 5 screen still gives you a bigger viewing experience when watching videos. Now one thing to note is that the screen has been installed upside down by design and this decision has caused some users to experience an issue known as the jelly effect but I've not experienced that on my unit. Now looking around the phone we get a beautiful slim 7.2mm metal body, it feels premium, we have a solid dual camera on the back, one is 16 megapixels, the other is 20 and this combination allows for some optical zoom. The performance of the camera is also very fast and in good lighting it can compete well against the Galaxy S8. In low light it falls a little bit behind but I do plan on doing a camera comparison so subscribe to my other channel if you want to see that. We have Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, it also came with a factory fitted screen protector which was a nice bonus. The fingerprint scanner here is without question the fastest and most accurate scanner I've ever used. It completely outclasses the one on the Galaxy S8. On the left we have the volume rocker, above that is a 3 position slider to put notifications in silent or vibrate mode. It's an extremely handy feature. There's nothing on the top. On the right we have a slot for the dual nano slims, no micro SD card expansion though. Power button. On the bottom we have a speaker, USB type C and a 3.5mm headphone jack. The speaker is loud, in fact it's one of the loudest on a current phone and so is the headphone jack, it can power headphones at very loud volumes. It's running Oxygen OS over top of Android 7.1.1 and this delivers a fairly stock Android experience with some really useful additions. For example, scrolling screen capture, which will allow you to take full length web page screenshots. You can also program the capacitive buttons to do different tasks. You can map an additional two tasks to each button. For example, you could set double tapping the home button to launch the camera or set a long press to bring up the split screen mode. You can also enable on screen buttons if you prefer and you can also customize the notification LED with different colors for different notifications. Oxygen OS also delivers an extremely smooth experience. It feels smoother than both the Galaxy S8 or Xiaomi Mi 6, which is a truly impressive feat. The 3300 mAh battery will get you through a full day of use, and it recharges using a fast charging technology called Dash Charge, which is faster than Qualcomm's Quick Charge 3.0 technology, but even better than that, on quick charge phones, the circuitry to manage the voltage flow is inside the phone itself, which causes the phone to heat up when charging. Dash charging, on the other hand, has the circuitry inside the wall charger, so the heat generated isn't transferred to the phone. This means you can do things like play games and keep charging at full speed without additional heat, whereas if you try this on a quick charge phone, the charging speeds are reduced to prevent overheating. So a close competitor to the OnePlus 5 is the Mi 6. It has similar specifications and a similar price. Now the Mi 6 is an incredible phone, but the OnePlus 5 is, well it's just better. Uh, performance is virtually the same between these two, but the OnePlus has a dash charge. It has more bands, so it's compatible with more network providers around the world. 
It uses Gorilla Glass 5, while the Mi 6 doesn't. And the fingerprint scanner is faster and more accurate. And Oxygen OS is also arguably better than MIUI. But more importantly, it doesn't have any stability issues like the Mi 6 occasionally has. Anyway, the point I'm making is that the OnePlus 5 is one of the best, if not the best phone that you can get in its price range. It is a phone that I can easily recommend and it is a joy to use. So that's the end of the video. If you've got any questions, drop me a comment. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.